Welcome back to my video series. I'm super pumped. 20th of February, 2017. The competition is five days from right now. I am super excited, even though at times, especially the last week or so, I've been in and out of having brain fog and being tired and being exhausted and that kind of stuff. But super excited overall to get up on the stage and just make this happen. Three months of preparation is coming to an end on the 5th of March. So if you're in Melbourne, come and watch 5th of March at the Mooney Valley Racecourse. I know you probably won't see this video in time, but you know, I just thought I'd put it out there anyway. So I wanna talk about a few things overall with the competition, how I'm feeling, the tanning, the what do you win as a competitor, all these bits and pieces that I haven't really talked about. So I've got a list here because I'm relying, because I'm losing my train of thought more and more as the days go on because I'm on zero carbs. I've had no carbs for three days, two days. And so I'm losing track of things very easily. But the first thing I'll talk about is my meal plan for the week. So I've mentioned this before in another video. Essentially, I'm on, this is peak week. So this is the week leading up to the competition. They call it peak week. So this is the week leading up to the competition whereby for the first four or five days, and I'll flash that meal plan up on the screen. I don't have it with me, I don't know where it is. But for the first four or five days, I'm literally on white meat and spinach every three hours. So that's what I'm on. That's what I'm on. And, you know, and coffee as well, or black coffee. So that, that has been incredible. I've depended a lot on caffeine to get me through the last two days. And, and of course, that's all I've been, spinach and white fish. Spinach, white fish, and that's it. So that's my meal plan. Now, very briefly, four or five days of the deplete. So really just getting all the glycogen out of my muscles. And then you'll see toward the end of the week, the sweet potato comes in, right? The carbs start coming back in on the day or two days before the competition to fill those muscles up with glycogen and water to make them full, to make them, imagine getting a balloon and, because right now, if you look at me, I probably look quite flat. Yeah, so when I say flat, you look deflated. Not emotionally, but in terms of my muscles, they look flat. You know, and that's because the glycogen has been worked out of them over the last few days. I've been training in the gym and I haven't been having carbohydrate, just protein, essentially just protein. And so the, the glycogen and water has been flushed out of my system now. And so my muscles look deflated, like a balloon that's been deflated. And so when you, you know, when you take glycogen in the form of carbohydrate, that draws water into the muscle cell again and causes that muscle to be inflated again, like blowing up a balloon. And so that means the muscle will then inflate against the inside of the, the inside of the skin. The muscle will inflate under the skin and so that will give that the muscle that full appearance and therefore if you have low levels of body fat, then you'll see all the striations and all that comes to the vascularity and that kind of stuff. So that's the, the general idea of it. In terms of executing it, it's, it differs from person to person, but that's the general concept that we're achieving. So there's depletion days and then there's carb loading days. And the carb loading days, usually one or two days before the day of the competition. And then of course, that leads into, and I didn't write this on my list, that just rem reminded me that there's a, a concept called spillover which is whereby if you have two, if you have more carbs, more glycogen than what your muscles need, than what your muscles will draw into the muscle cell, then you have this thing called spillover, which means that you have glycogen and water floating around, if I use very loose terms here, floating around between the muscle and the skin, and that will give the competitor a very, what they call a blurry look. So think of like a smooth, not sharp, not defined, not hard, whatever term you want to call it. Having that spillover is a bad, absolute bad outcome. It can really undo months of preparation. And it could take, you know, it could take days to undo the spillover, you know, to, to get rid of that excess glycogen and water out of your body. And by then it's too late. So 
My biggest fear with the carb loading, because I've never competed before, I don't know how much carb is too much and how much carb is not enough. To make my muscles full, but not too full to cause spillover and not um, and not under full so that I'm not, you know, I'm not, like, I'm not missing out on the potential gains of inflating my muscles more than what they could be inflated. Does that make sense? So spillover is what they call it, you know, and I, I want to avoid that. So that's on my mind. It's been on my mind for a few days looking at whether the amount of carb that you see on my meal plan, flash it back on the screen, you'll see that 400 grams of sweet potato from memory is something like 400 grams whether that will be too much or not enough. And if it's too much, I'm in deep shit. So I believe that it's best, I'm not sure about this, I'm learning this for the first time, to undershoot as opposed to overshoot. So get a little bit, have less carbs than what you should, um, just to make sure that you don't spill over. Um, but in terms of how to quantify that, I don't know. So um, anyway, so that's where that stands. Training with Penny. So obviously Penny is my coach. She's taking care of my training. She's taking care of my nutrition because I can usually do that stuff on my own. But when you have so many moving uh, wheels in this whole equation, it's best to give it to somebody else and they can manage all of that for you. So I have a training session. It's almost four o'clock right now here in Melbourne. I have a training session with her tonight. We'll be doing probably buys and tries maybe. And then tomorrow morning, I have a training session with her as well. And it's the last time I'll see her before the competition. So I still have my, so this is the final week leading up to the competition. I'm still training the same way in the gym. It's not as intense as what it usually is because I just don't have the energy to train at the same intensity. I don't have that pump because I don't have that, I don't have carbs, I'm not having carbs. And so that's that and tanning sessions so um i have three tanning sessions booked in already if you're watching this and you're looking at competing i've been told this and it's not a bad idea and i can pass this wisdom on to you to book your tanning sessions in advance i book my tanning sessions with a lady who specializes in competition tanning and i booked it three or four weeks ago and i've got three tanning sessions i got one on friday night one on saturday night and one on Sunday morning. So I compete on the Sunday. Today is Tuesday. <laughs> I told you I'm losing my mind. I gotta check what day it is. So today's Tuesday, I have a tanning session, Friday night, Saturday night, and then Sunday morning. I think it's like 40 minutes before I get on the stage, I have it, my final coat. It's crazy, isn't it? Three coats. It's like painting a house. So that's like $80 for that, those three tans. And I was going to mention something else. Getting dumbbells for the pump up. Okay, so I have to go to a gym. Uh, there's a gym nearby and I have to go there on Friday. I've got to collect some dumbbells. So I'll collect, you know, some 10 kilo or 22 pounds. If you're watching this from the US, 22 pound dumbbells. And I'll use those dumbbells on the day of the competition to pump my muscles up, to inflate my muscles. So what I'll do is you watch this video series through to the end you'll see footage of me with those dumbbells inflating my muscles. And I'll do this immediately before I go on stage to really get the blood flow through those muscles. And I'll pump every aspect of my body except my legs. And so legs are the only part of my body which I do not pump up. I pump everything else up except my legs. I'll talk more about this pump up process when I get to that stage in the journey. And so I'll talk about the exercises that I'll be doing as part of that pump up to get the maximum pump to prepare my body to make it look the best for the stage on Sunday. So I've got to pick up those dumbbells. So if you're watching this, you know, I'm told that all you need are a set of dumbbells. Now for guys, you know, 10 kilos, 22 pounds is enough. That's all you need. And you do high reps, high repetitions, low weight. And uh, for women, probably, I don't know, I'm guessing four kilos, eight, nine pounds, 10 pounds, something along those lines. But I, you know, I don't know. I'm just, a sh based on what the guys have, the women would surely have probably three quarters or half if you want to do high reps for those dumbbells to get pumped before you go on stage. Or you can use resistance bands as well. But I'm using dumbbells. Shaving and grooming. So shaving and grooming, I, 
Okay, so I'm not sure if you probably won't be able to see it, but I do have some little bit of regrowth all over, and I'm as hairy as f I'm as hairy as they come, right? So you have like apes or chimps, and then you have me. In terms of the human evolution cycle, I'm very much as close to our ancestors as you can imagine. I I hair up to the point where if you shave all the hair off me, you could turn the hair into a handbag. I don't know, right? Into a fur coat. So I have some regrowth, I've got to shave all this off. Now, what I've been doing leading up to five days out is I've been getting myself into a routine of shaving my arms. It's weird, and as a guy, right? It's really weird because I don't shave my body. I don't shave my body, I shave my face, and that's it. So telling a guy to shave his arms, it's very unusual. It feels weird at first, but I've been shaving my arms my armpits, I'm still, I've only shaved them once. And then of course, I've shaved my chest and my abs and even parts of my back where I can reach. And I started doing that about three weeks ago. So I can get my body into the habit of, you know, being shaved. And then I can see if I get ingrown hairs and stuff. And of course, if I was shaving and I was getting too many ingrown hairs, I'd know that that was a bad move. So that was one thing that I've been doing as well. So I won't be shaving again until tomorrow. So today's Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll be shaving my entire body. And then uh, Thursday, nothing, I'll be completely shaved. And then Friday night is when I'll have my tan. Now, if you wanted to get waxed, I've been told this by the tanning lady. If you think of your guy watching this looking at getting waxed instead of shaving, you want to get into a waxing cycle like five weeks out and get you know, into the waxing cycle back then. Apparently, I've been told this, that if you are a week out and you decide you want to wax, it's too late. You wanna make that decision earlier on in the piece. Now, that's what I've been told. I don't know that for sure, but actually a few people have told me the same thing. So I didn't wanna wax, because waxing kills. And, and so I decided to shave instead. So shaving and grooming, I'm getting a haircut, right? And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm having a little bit of stubble for the stage. I don't want to be like, you know, boy band, facial, look, have no facial hair. That's not what I'm going for. I want a little bit of masculinity in this competition, okay? So I'm going with a bit of stubble. I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow and I'm doing a full shave of my body uh, everywhere else tomorrow as well. Discuss the photo shoot. Okay, so I've been dealing with a photographer company, Urban Photography, and I have a photo shoot with them on Saturday morning. So the day before the competition, I already have one coat of tan on by the time I see them. We're doing an indoor photo shoot in a gym, and I get to choose the creative of how that's executed. And because I've never done a proper photo shoot before, I'm gonna leave most of the creative to the photographer to do it for me, right? To, to come up with the creative ideas and things like that. But I have ideas around wearing Muay Thai outfits and that kind of stuff, because I love kickboxing. I'm not really into, you know, the traditional holding a dumbbell and take a photo. I'm not really into that. I'm more into, you know, having a skipping rope or holding onto rings or having a Muay Thai outfit with, you know, gloves on or that kind of, that's what I'm into. So, we, I'll, you know, if you watch the series, you'll get to see those photos as well and what we come up with. And um, I was doing another photo shoot with a friend that's fallen, I think mostly fallen through because the gym manager never got back to me about getting approval to use the gym after hours because he doesn't know how to deal with customers. Um, unfortunately, he just never returned my emails on two occasions. So that's mostly out unless I decide to go behind his back and do a photo shoot without him knowing about it in the gym that he manages. So more on that later, so that's the photo shoot. And division, the, the divisions I will be competing in. So I'll be competing in, I've never competed before in my life, I'll be competing in two divisions, okay? They call it Rising Star, which is somebody who's never competed in any division, in any federation, in anywhere in the world, ever in their life. So they call it the Rising Star Division. And then I'm competing in the second division, which is called Rookie of the Year, right? So this is for any person who's never competed any more than four times in any division, in any federation. So essentially, I'll be going up against guys that have competed for more than once, less than four times. In that division, and then the other division, the Rising Star division, I'll be competing with everybody on the same level playing field. Nobody in that division has competed anywhere else 
ever in any division anywhere. So, um, so I'm pumped about that. So I've given myself the added challenge of competing in the other, the, the, the rookie division to go against guys I've already competed before because that's how crazy I am. That I don't give a f to be honest. I just want to do it and I don't care about them competing three times or four times and I've never competed. You never know what's going to happen, yeah? Maybe a little bit cocky, but I feel pretty confident. So that's what I'm doing. Next one. What do you win? <laughs> a lot of people ask me this question. Oh, hold on one sec. Okay, I'll read this out to you. All right, I'm gonna read this out to you. So what do you win? What do you, what do you win? What, what, what's the prize? You know, do you win a holiday to Tahiti? Do you, you know, win a, a trip on a Kentucky tour? Do you get, uh, you know, three large pizzas, New York style, and you get to eat them, you know, within five seconds flat? Or what is the prize? So I'll read it out to you. Because it's a good question. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know what the prize was for a good one or two. I didn't really care. I didn't really give a f I didn't care because for me, I'm not doing it to win the prize, whatever that was, because I didn't know at the time. I'm doing it because I want to you know, be the best person I can be, the best version of myself, and this is a personal challenge for me. That's the ultimate prize. But because enough people asked me about it, I had to go and I had to go and I was like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. So I finally did my research and I read the pamphlet because I didn't really read the pamphlet until only three or four weeks ago. Okay, rising star and rookie show highlights. So stick with me here. Pro qualifier for rookies. That's part of the prize. Pro qualifier for rookies, qualifier for nationals and Team Australia. So basically you get the chance to compete at the national and the international level, I think it says. Competitor show bag. Yeah, yes. That's what I'm, that's what gets me excited. The sh I want the show bag. The t-shirt, you get a t-shirt. Well, I need a t-shirt, I have a t-shirt now. So I need a t-shirt, I'll take the t-shirt and a cap. I'm not wearing my one right now, so I can take the cap as well and use that. Uh, achievement medallions. Now, from what I see in the photos, they look like something you could eat and looks like there's chocolate inside. So I'll take those if you can eat them. No registration day to attend. Huge statues for rookie overalls. So in other words, you win a statue, like 74 centimeters. So how tall is that? I don't know. Oh, it's tall. 74 centimeters. Competitors may enter multiple divisions. Okay, so qualify for Natural Athletica World Championships in Thailand. Oh, I just come from Thailand. June. Okay. <laughs> if you've been following the series, you realize that I was stuck in Thailand for two and a half weeks with those floods. If you remember that, and I was, I was doing my training over in Thailand with the floods everywhere, right? Water up to my waist. If you guys have followed the series, you, you realize I'm the, I want to go back to Thailand. No, not right now. But anyway, that's one of the prizes, the, the chance to compete at the national, international level in Thailand in June, 2017. So they're the prizes, show bag, t-shirt, cap, and a qualifier for the nationals and the internationals. And you get other bits and pieces, like you get to wear a pair, free pair of shorts. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so they're the prizes, okay? But that doesn't really get me pumped. What pumps me the most is the opportunity to be the best person of my, be, be the best person I can be, and ultimately just, the, it's winning enough for me to get up on the stage. That's a huge achievement in itself. 50% of people that start this comp prep, from what I'm told, drop out. They don't even finish it. So it's a massive achievement just to get onto the stage. So that's a prize that I'm willing to accept Wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly and not and not have to worry about show bags and that kind of shit. So anyway, that was for people interested in what the prize is. Now, next thing on my list, going on and on, sorry about this. Uh, what do you win? We've talked about that. How am I feeling? I'm feeling f***ing awesome. I'm feeling amazing. To be brutally honest with you, there are times throughout today, throughout yesterday, throughout the day before, where I feel brain fog. I feel tired. I don't want to talk to anybody. Don't talk to me. I want to isolate myself. I want to put myself in a box. I want to lock myself in a cubicle. When I go to the bathroom, I just want to stay there. I don't want to leave. And there are maybe, you know, half an hour moments of the day where that happens, where I just want to be left alone. 
And there are some, sometimes I can snap, sometimes. Not like off the rails, but just there are times when I, I know it, I have that self-awareness, I'm like, oh, and I tell people, I've been telling people in advance, so, hey guys, just to let you know, I'm going into peak week, that means that I'm not gonna be my normal self. They're gonna be moments, and if you brief people, then at least they have that understanding of what you'll be going through. So make sure if you're looking at competing, you have a good chat to your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your children, and say, you know what guys, I'm going through this thing, my hormones are gonna be all over the place, my mood's gonna be up and down, because my leptin's gonna be fucked. my testosterone's gonna be this, and this, and this, and this, and I'm not gonna be the same person. But wait for the week, Leave the house for a week if you need to, come back and I'll be a completely different person right after the competition, right? So for me, it's been a little bit up and down throughout the week emotionally, but to be honest with you, I'm not sitting at an emotional lull for any length of time. I just sit there for half an hour. I think oh, this is gross shit. And then today, let me flash up on your screen. Everybody was having pizza in the office. Fucking pizza. And everybody's laughing. It's like, oh, Brad's got a competition. I've got pizza in front of you, in front of him. I think the guys are having pizza, not just one pizza guys, like four f***ing pizzas. Give me a break now. This is what I've got to be. Pretty good. Okay, I'm sure it is. Doing? I'm sure it is, mate. You're in the video too. And so, I flash, I took a video, I put it on my Snapchat as well. So if you're on Snapchat, you get to see that stuff as well, right? And, um, and that was a little bit, oh, look, I could have had the pizza, like I really could have. But you know, that was a little hard, but I have very good self-control, so it didn't debilitate me, but it was it was a tease. It was, you know, as guys call it a tease. And so yeah, so guys had pizza today at work, and everybody made me well aware of the fact that there was pizza around, even though I could smell it before it entered the building. And so that's all I have on my list. So that is my crazy schedule. I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions, reach out to me. More than happy to help. You can go to the author section. You'll see, you know, Seek Fit Life. That's that's me. And uh, you'll see that I've got other videos. And I talk about dieting and nutrition and training and everything and other videos everywhere else. I love sharing knowledge. I love sharing my story. You are fantastically awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you in the next video. Try